Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. So, uh, this is the, um, I'm not even gonna lie, I forgot what this guitar is called. I have it down on my notes here as the Kramer Hot Wheels. One second while I do the prep that I should have done before turning on the camera. Many hours later. All right, so this, of course, is the Kramer Hot Rod Beretta. You all knew that, I definitely knew that, and I usually shy away from these 80s shred guitars, so this is gonna be an interesting deep dive. Smash the shit out of that like button to help appease the algorithm gods, and let's take a closer look. <laughs> So this guitar is a part, uh, arguably the best part, of Kramer's custom graphics collection. Now, if you're like me and you didn't grow up in the 80s, Kramer hasn't been super relevant in the time that I've been playing guitar. They were big in the 80s, early 90s, and back then, from what I understand, they were known as being super modern, super innovative. Late 70s, early 80s, they were using hybrid wooden aluminum necks and ebonol or phenolic fingerboards. Really forward-thinking stuff. Nowadays, they're more nostalgia merchants than anything else. They own it, and while I'd love to see them do modern things as well, they've got the 80 shredder pedigree, and they put it to good use. Back in the day, they were known for having these crazy, sometimes elaborate, attention-grabbing designs. So for the custom graphics series, Kramer's collaborated with modern artists to pay homage to that history. This hot rod is specifically inspired by, quote, glittery, hot-rotted toy cars from the 1960s, end quote. And it is a nod to Hot Wheels, right? The logo, which was started in 1968. Fun fact, by the way, about Hot Wheels, in 1968, a Hot Wheels car would run you 98 cents. And today, even after 60 years of inflation, a Hot Wheels car will still run you 99 cents at Walmart or Target or wherever. Just got pulled down a Wikipedia hole while doing my research. <laughs> it's crazy. You know what else is crazy though? Today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online community where you can learn real world skills from real career experts. So I get questions all the time, like, why is your face so annoying? But also questions like, how do I start a YouTube channel? How do I learn to edit videos? How do I learn to use Photoshop? And for all that, my friends, you wanna be checking out Skillshare. They've got over 25,000 classes ranging from graphic design to business development to googly-eyed animal face origami. And what I really like about Skillshare is every class is broken down into sections, so there's a structure that makes the learning process easier because you're building on what you know. And you can also learn at your own pace on your own time. Personally, I've been really enjoying Make Your Creative Space by Mimi Chow. I find environment is really important when it comes to being efficiently 
creative. I'm moving to a new space soon and I want to build it from the ground up to be my fortress of creative solitude. And this class has been ultra helpful in guiding the thought process. You ready for the real crazy part though? The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get one month free unlimited access to Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. That's more than enough time to learn the fundamentals of making YouTube videos, learn how to build your own business, learn how to make 25 vodka cocktails. Listen, whatever you're into, Skillshare's got you. And after the free period, a premium Skillshare membership is less than 10 bucks a month. So if you wanna see why so many people trust Skillshare to learn real world skills from real world experts, click the link in the description. Invest in yourself and of course, clicking the link helps support the channel by letting them know that I sent you. But back to the guitar, we have this amazing metallic blue sparkle and then just the chattiest hot rod flames. It's almost a shame they're only on the top and not the back for extra chad energy. But if you're not big into the pure speed of these visuals, there are six others in the custom graphics collection. Danger Zone, White Lotus, and Strike First Berettas are available with reverse headstocks. Top Gun Maverick is out later this year in the latest season of Cobra Kai just dropped. Remember Top Gun and Karate Kid? I remember. And lastly, there's an The 84, The Illusionist. The grammar here hurts my brain. And that rounds out the current crop of custom graphics collection guitars. But since they're a big part of Kramer's history, I wouldn't be surprised if this were to become a rotating lineup. Strike First, for example, was only added this year. Kinda interesting, everything else in the collection is 80s inspired, except for this one. Which, of course, because it has the flames, is easily the coolest. But underneath all the flames and all the sparkles, we've got an alder body classic super strat shape with a bolt-on three-piece maple neck, maple fingerboard as well, dot inlays. It's kinda funny, you've got all the flame and sparkle sh happening down here, and then it's paired with something super simple up here. <laughs> Old school Kramer logo, they've gone through a few of them over their time and they were constantly updating that and the headstock shape all throughout the 80s. It's a complete mess and it's a whole esoteric rabbit hole you can definitely get lost in. But from about 30 minutes of Googling, I think this is the logo they changed to in 1985 on the banana headstock shape, which is similar but not entirely the same to the hockey stick shape. So if you've ever heard that terminology being thrown around and you have no idea what the hell anybody's talking about, I got you. Now, what's interesting about these Kramers is they look like classic strats, right? But let me tell you, playing this is not like playing a strat. Firstly, every Kramer I've tried, all three so far, have been fairly heavy. We're not talking Les Paul heavy, but we're talking eight and a half, maybe eight and three quarter pounds. The next though, are where the real differences are. The Jersey Star I tried had a 16 inch fingerboard radius, same as an Ibanez, and this isn't nearly as flat as that. The Kramer website has it listed as a 12.6 inch radius, which is oddly specific, but we move. The next shape is also quite thin. It's not flat on the back like an Ibanez Wizard, but the curve is noticeably more shallow than what you find on a Fender, for example. But it's still got that classic bolt-on snappiness to it. So the last time I tried a Kramer, the fingerboard edges weren't really rounded at all. I don't know what I mean by that. They weren't rounded whatsoever and it did not feel good. Well, they've done something about that. Both this and The Illusionist, which I'll also be demoing, shameless plug, to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that, have reasonably rounded fingerboards. So everything feels much more comfortable this time around. The ends of the jumbo frets have been rounded flush with the fingerboard edges too. That's another difference between this and a normal Strat. It's got big ass jumbo frets, which make it much easier to play, in my opinion. <laughs> This guitar was sent to me directly from Kramer, and the setup was pretty awesome, honestly. 
kind of low action, and I've had this since late last year, and it's still in tune. Listen, I'm not a fan of Floyd's, but they do have some benefits like that, especially if they're the Korean Made 1000 series. It's a great quality trim, and this is a non-recessed Floyd, so it's not fully floating, not as big of a pain in the ass. You can break a string and the rest of them still stay in tune. So this way, it's less maintenance. The trade-off is while you can dive bomb all night long, there's no pulling up. So dime squeals, for example, are out. Something that Floyd's get a lot of criticism for is it's difficult to change tunings. Not only because of the balancing act with the rear screws, but also because of the locking nut. So to solve that, EVH makes a little addition for Floyd's called the D-Tuna like the fish. I'd never used one before this guitar. I didn't even know how it worked and had to pull up a video tutorial, but it functioned exactly as advertised after I'd fixed the setup. So this is what I was talking about with the kind of awesome setup because while it played great out of the box, this little screw that holds the block in place was just not in the right position at all. The trem was pulling back and the angle of the D-Tuna made it completely unusable. Easy enough to open up and fix it and now I've got a guitar that I can just drop immediately or bring back into standard on the fly without a tuner. Amazing. <laughs> My favorite thing though about the hardware on this guitar isn't the Floyd, it's not the locking nut, it's not even the engraved Kramer neck plate, you know I love those. It's the Allen wrench garage on the back of the headstock. It's just so convenient, especially on a guitar with a locking nut. Guitar companies, listen up. If you insist on putting a Floyd on your guitars, please consider installing this to store the tools too. For pickups, it's just this single angled JB in the bridge. Single humbucker, single volume, what else you need honestly? <laughs> the reason it's angled, by the way, is it's not F-spaced. So this way, the same way that Eddie Van Halen originally bolted a humbucker to his Frankenstrat, makes it so the pole pieces line up with the strings. I understand the Beretta is one of Kramer's most iconic models. They've made it in the same way forever, and that's why they've used a pickup ring, but I can't help but think how much cooler it would have looked direct mounted. There's no tone control. The single volume knob is push-pull though, so you at least get a little bit of versatility there by splitting the pickup. And for you other curious souls out there, that's the inside of the cavity, standard high quality Korean electronics. It's just nice and sparkly and flamey. Nice tight fit for the neck pocket. I mean, it really is just a very well-built guitar. Okay, so let's wrap this up with some final thoughts. As much as I'd love Kramer to also do modern things like a Beretta with stainless steel frets, a Pacer with fluences maybe, credit where credit is due. They nail the nostalgia, especially so with the custom graphics series. I mean, f***ing look at this guitar. I loved playing with Hot Wheels. I had a dope ass collection. And I'll tell you firsthand, that nostalgic joy is channeled when I'm playing this. <laughs> I guess one of the biggest questions people have about this guitar and about modern day Kramers in general is well, how does it compare to modern day Charvels? Kramer is team Gibson, Charvel is team Fender, and both of them are key flag bearers of 80s shred tradition in 2022. There are a lot of similarities between Charvel and Kramer. I'll be totally honest, I would prefer Charvel necks. They're more medium thickness compared to the thinner Kramer neck on this one at least. And they have a compound fingerboard radius, which I really like as well. But unless you go the custom shop route, there isn't a direct Charvel equivalent to this. Like forget the flames, forget the blue metallic sparkle. I know it's hard because it's just so there and it makes the guitar so f***ing fast. <laughs> what I mean is, at its core, this is a stripped down, highly functional shredder. Single pickup, single volume, non-recessed Floyd with the D-Tuna. There are some guitars that are pure, unadulterated fun. And this guitar, this is one of them. So that is the Kramer Hot Rod Beretta from the Custom Graphics Collection. I thoroughly enjoyed it, but those are just my thoughts. 
What are you thinking? Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of the Beretta? Amazing, stupid, fastest guitar you've ever seen. If you're new here, you've made it all the way to the end of the video. Well done. You may as well subscribe at this point and tick the bell for notifications. That way you don't miss any new uploads from me. Shout out to all my wonderful patrons for making this and all the other videos possible. They're awesome. If you want to support the channel as well, consider joining them and get bonus extras as well. Affiliate, social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. Actually, scratch that, never mind. I'm relaunching merch, so social media, affiliate, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.